Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you guys are watching this today. I hope no matter what time of day it is, you guys are having a great day. Today, I'm going to go over how to convert an equation into slope-intercept form to make it easier for us to graph. Now, today, I won't have you guys do any graphing. We're just going to do the algebra work so that we're ready to go uh, for the next time we're in class. But if you ever need to graph an equation, it's always easiest if it's in slope-intercept form. And so being able to manipulate or rearrange the equation to make it into y equals form is super, super helpful. So today, you're going to have a delta math assignment. We're going to go over it together uh, so you guys have a good sense of where you're at. Uh, and I'll just do a couple examples, make sure you're good to go, and then we'll have you guys try some problems on your own. So we're going to start with this first problem here. It says put the following equation of a line into slope-intercept form, simplifying all fractions. So the first thing we need you to know is you're going to need some paper today. And so you might be up in your room or whatever, and you don't usually have paper in front of you. You guys are going to need your math notebooks today because uh, you're going to have to write some stuff out. And then you're going to enter the equations in here. Uh, when you guys are using Delta Math, I just want to remind you, um, there is the Watch Help video here. And so that way you guys will have a video to watch. And then there's also your solutions and your hints and your different things up here. So make sure you play around to use everything that's provided for you if you guys get stuck. And of course, you can always email us. All right, so it says put the following equation, 4x plus 3y equals negative 21. Right now, this is what we call standard form. We're going to rearrange it into what we call slope-intercept form. And so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the paper that I'm going to use this. I'll show you how to do it, and then we'll show you how to enter it in uh, when you're all done. So let's go ahead and flip over, and I'll meet you there. All right, so here's our equation, 4x plus 3y equals negative 21. Now, for us to graph it, it wants us to graph it in what we call slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. The most important part for slope-intercept form is that y is all by itself. It's just y equals. In this one, we got some things bothering the y, and so we're just going to use that same technique we used before to rearrange to get y by itself. So just as always, I'm going to have to get rid of a times 3 and then this positive 4x. And I'm going to make my decision on which one to get rid of by starting farthest away from the y. And so farthest away is this positive 4x. So to get rid of the positive 4x, I'm going to subtract 4x. As long as I do it to both sides and I preserve that equality or that equal sign, so I'm going to, whatever I do to the left side, I'm going to do it to the right. 4x minus 4x cancels out. And I'm left with 3y equals, and then on this side I have negative 21 minus 4x. And because this is an x and this isn't, they're not like terms, I can't actually do the math. So we've said if you can't do the math, then just show it. To show negative 21 minus 4x, you type in negative 21 minus 4x. At this point, we're almost done. We wanted to get it in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equals, not 3y equals, and so we still have to get rid of this multiply by 3. To get rid of a multiply by 3, we're going to divide by 3. And just like before, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm going to divide this entire side by 3. Now we do have some cleanup to do. Uh, it does want us to reduce fractions, things like that. So I can't leave it just like this. I'm going to finish it up and put it into y equals mx plus b form. So I just want to remind you that both of these numbers here are getting divided by 3. So if you want, you can think of it as negative 21 divided by 3 minus 4x divided by 3. So you can think about each one of those numbers is getting divided by 3. And that makes it a little bit easier for us to clean up because now I look at this and say, oh yeah, negative 21 divided by 3. That's just negative 7. And then 4 thirds I can't reduce, so we can just say 4 thirds x. And so it doesn't matter that the x is up there, we put the x down there, it's still getting multiplied to it. But now it's in the equation y equals. This here is going to be our slope because it has the x next to it. And this is going to be our starting point or our y-intercept uh, because it's the constant all by itself. So what we're going to do now is go back to delta math and hopefully plug in this equation and it will like it. So I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a second. All right, so now we just got to take that answer and plug it in here. So I'm going to take the y equals negative 7 minus 4 thirds x and type it in here. So I'm just going to type in y equals 
negative 7, so I'm just using my keyboard for that, minus, now for the 4 thirds, we can type 4, and then next to the shift key by the enter key is the question mark, and then there's the, the dash. If I hit that, it'll automatically bring up the fraction, 4 thirds. Now if I put the X here, or the C, it's going to go on the bottom, and you want to be really careful that your X doesn't go in the denominator. The X needs to go to the right, so I have to hit the right arrow um, and move over to get up here and then put the X in. That's going to be important. If you put the X in the bottom, it's going to get mad at you. So I have negative 7 minus 4 thirds X. I'm just simply going to hit Submit Answer. It says, is this the answer you want to submit? If you notice the X is down here, then you typed it in wrong, so just go back and fix it by hitting that right arrow to move it over. Yep, that's what I want, and it says I'm all good. And so I got Y alone, I did it, I divided, I split it up, and I went from there. It doesn't matter the order, notice their order had the X first, then the number, mine had the number, then the X. You can do it either way, uh, but once you get one done, you're just going to go to New Problem, and it's going to ask you to do the same thing again. You guys are going to do, I think, six or seven of those. That's what we're asking for you guys to do today. And we want to make sure you feel really good about um, moving those around. If you get some wrong, there's not going to be a penalty today. We just want to make sure that you get six or seven right and kind of go from there. Let's take a look at this one just to make sure we're good. If you feel like you got this already, feel free to go right to the assignment now and work on it. And, um, yeah, for those that aren't sure, let's do one more problem together. So it says 12x minus 4y equals negative 12. And it asks us to put this into slope-intercept form, and we want to make sure we're simplifying all our fractions. So if we switch back over to our paper here, 12x minus 4y equals negative 12. Our goal is to get y by itself. And so in this one, the farthest away is the positive 12x. So to get rid of a positive 12x, I'm going to subtract 12x. Whatever I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. On this side, 12x minus 12x cancels and just leaves me the negative 4y. Don't lose that negative. It's really, really important that we don't lose that. So it's negative 4y equals, and on this side, we have negative 12 minus 12x's. Now, they're not like terms. I can't do the math, so I'm just going to show the math. I have a negative 12 take away 12x's. At this point, I'm almost done. I just need to get rid of the negative 4 times y. So to get rid of that times negative 4, I'm going to divide by negative 4. I'm going to end up dividing both of these by negative 4. So if I want, I can make the big division bar, or I can just know that I have to divide each of these separately by negative 4, and I can do that. Now, as you guys go through, just be careful. Uh, negative 4 divided by negative 4 cancels, gives me y equals a negative 12 divided by a negative 4, that's going to give me a positive 3. And again, a negative 12 divided by a negative 4 is also going to give me a positive 3, and so then this x just comes along with it. So that's what it means when it says simplify. Can we actually break this down? Now sometimes it's going to be a fraction, and you just have to simplify or reduce that fraction. Um, if you don't reduce it, it'll tell you that you did it right, but you just didn't reduce the fraction, and that's all right. So if we come over to the program, we're going to type in that answer. y equals 3 plus 3x. I'm going to submit my answer, and hopefully it's good to go. Are you sure you want to submit it? Yeah, I'm sure. And I got it right. And you're going to go through, and you're going to do a few of these. This one looks like it's going to have no fractions, so I'm going to keep going. This one's going to have no fractions. This one will have a fraction, so let's talk about this one really quick. So if you get a fraction one, uh, you'll know how to handle it. And if you get it wrong, you just get another chance. So it's not like uh, you have to get them all right. There's no penalty for being wrong today. They just want you to get so many correct. So this one says 15y minus 18x equals negative 30. So this is a good one because it explains or it shows us a couple different things. Uh, the first thing it's going to show us is here the y is in a different spot. Last couple times the y has been right there. It doesn't matter where the y is, we just want to get it by itself. So here, farthest away from the y is not the times 15, it's the minus 18x. So to get rid of a minus 18x, I'm going to add 18x. Whatever I do to one side of the algebra equation, I have to do to the other. Those are going to cancel out. The 15y is going to come down. 
and on this side I have negative 30 plus 18x. And at this point, I still don't have y by itself, so I'm going to get rid of the times 15y by dividing. So just like before, I'm going to divide this entire side by 15, which means both of these are going to get divided by 15. That's going to cancel out, and I get y equals. Now I can do negative 30 divided by 15. I can use my calculator on my Chromebook, or if I have a calculator at home, negative 30 divided by 15 gives me negative 2. So I can just change that into negative 2. 18 divided by 15, though, gives me a decimal, 1.2. And we prefer not to have decimals in our slope. It's hard to go up 1.2 over 1. It's much easier to go up 3 over 4 or 6 over 5 or whatever it might simplify to. So we keep these as fractions for that reason. So 18 over 15. Now, if you have a calculator that reduces, you can do that. Otherwise, you just have to think, is there any numbers that can divide into 18 and 15? And we know 3 divides into both. So 18 divided by 3 gives me 6. 15 divided by 3 gives me 5. So if I just take both of these numbers, divide them by 3, 18 over 15, both divided by 3, gives me 6 over 5. And so that's our fraction reduced. So 18 over 15 is 6 fifths. And then the x just comes along for the ride. And so we can just type that in, and we should be good to go. So y equals negative 2 plus 6 fifths x. Again, I don't want the x down there. That's what a lot of people are going to do. If you go to hit submit answer, you're going to notice the x is in the bottom. We don't want that. So if you get that, just hit no. Come back. Hit the right arrow key here to get this. Watch this little cursor right here. It's going to jump up to the right. Hit the right arrow on your number key and it jumps up there. Then you can put your x. Submit answer. Now it looks right. Hit yes and we're good to go. So you guys are going to have six or seven questions. Um, try them out and uh, hopefully you have great luck with them. When we come back on Monday, it's going to make our graphing so much easier because uh, we're going to actually take these equations then and graph them. So until then, good luck. Have a great weekend. Talk to you guys soon.